Hello everybody, my name is Antonina Brukova. Today is Saturday and I'll tell you the fairy tale about the frog princess. In days gone by there was a king who had three sons. When his sons came of age, the king called them to him and said, My dear lads, I want you to get married so that I may see your little ones, my grandchildren, before I die. And his sons replied, Very well, father, give us your blessing. Who do you want us to marry? Each of you must take an arrow, go out in this green meadow and shoot it. Where the arrows fall, there shall your destiny be. So the sons bowed to their father, and each of them took an arrow and went out into the green meadow, where they drew their bows and let fly their arrows. The arrow of the eldest son fell in the courtyard of a nobleman, and the nobleman's daughter picked it up. The arrow of the middle son fell in the yard of a merchant, and the merchant's daughter picked it up. But the arrow of the youngest son, Prince Ivan, flew up and away he knew not where. He walked on and on in searching of it, and at last he came to the march where what should he see but a frog sitting on a leaf with the arrow in its mouth. Prince Ivan said to it, Frog, frog, give me back my arrow. And the frog replied, Marry me. How can I marry a frog? Marry me, for it is your destiny. Prince Ivan was sadly disappointed. But what could he do? He picked up the frog and brought it home. The king celebrated three weddings. His eldest son was married to the nobleman's daughter, his middle son to the merchant's daughter, and poor Prince Ivan to the frog. One day the king called his sons and said, I want to see which of your wives is most skilled with her needle. Let them each see me assured by tomorrow morning. The sons bowed to their father and went out. Prince Ivan went home and sat in the corner looking very sad. The frog hopped about on the floor and said to him, why are you so sad, Prince Ivan? Are you in trouble? My father wants you to see him assured by tomorrow morning, said the frog. Don't be downhearted, Prince Ivan. Go to bed, night of the mother of council. So Prince Ivan went to bed and the frog hopped out onto the doorstep, cast off her frog skin and turned into Vasilisa the wise, a maiden fair beyond compare. She clapped her hands and cried, Maids and nurses, get ready, work steady. By tomorrow morning, see me a shirt like the one my own father used to wear. When Prince Ivan awoke the next morning, the frog was hopping about on the floor again and on the table wrapped up a lion and towel. The shirt lay. Prince Ivan was delighted. He picked up the shirt and took it to his father. He found the king receiving gift from his other sons. When the eldest son laid out his shirt, the king said, This shirt will do for one of my servants. When the middle son laid out his shirt, the king said, This one is good only for the bathhouse. Prince Ivan laid out his shirt handsomely embroidered in gold and silver. The king took one look at it and said, Now, this is a shirt indeed. I shall wait only the best occasions. The two elder brothers went home and said to each other, It looks as though he had laughed at Prince Ivan's house for nothing. It seems she is not a frog, but a sorceress. Again the king called his sons. Let your wives bake me bread by tomorrow morning, he said. I want to know which one cooks the best. Prince Ivan came home looking very sad again. The frog said to him, Why are you so sad, prince? The king 
I want you to bake bread for him by tomorrow morning, replied the husband. Don't be worried, don't hurt it. Prince Ivan, go to bed. Night is the mother of council. Now those other daughters in law had made fun of the frog at first, but this time they sent an old henwife to see how the frog baked her bed bread. But the frog was cunning and guessed what they were about. She knitted the dough, broke the top of the straw, and emptied the dough straw straight down the hole. The old henwife ran back to the other wives and told them what she had seen, and they did as the frog had done. Then the frog hopped out onto the doorstep, turned it to Vasilisa of the wives, and clapped her hands and cried, Maids and nurses, get ready, work steady. By tomorrow morning, bake me a soft white loaf like the ones I had when I lived at home. Prince Ivan woke up in the morning, and there on the table he saw a loaf of bread with all kinds of pretty designs on it. On the sides were quaint figures, royal cities with walls and gates. Prince Ivan was ever so pleased. He wrapped the loaf up in a linen towel and took it to his father. Just then, the king was receiving the loaves from his elder sons. Their wives had dropped the towel into the fire, as the old henwife had told them, and it came out just a lump of charring dough. The king took the loaf from the eldest son, looked at it, and sent it to the servant hall. He took the loaf from the middle son and did the same with that. But when Prince Ivan handed his loaf, the king said, Now, that is what I call bread. It is fit to be eaten only on holidays. And the king bade his sons come to his feast the next day and bring their wives with them. Prince Ivan came home grieving again. The frog hopped up and said, Why are you so sad, Prince Ivan? Has your father said anything unkind to you? Froggy, my froggy, how can I help being sad? Father wants me to bring you to his feast, but how can I appear with you before people as my wife? Don't be downhearted, Prince Ivan, said the frog. Go to the feast alone, and I will come later. When you hear a knocking and a banging, do not be afraid. If you are asked, say it is only my froggy riding in her box. So, Prince Ivan went by himself. His elder brothers drove up with their wives, rushed and pouted and dressed in fine clothes. They stood there and mocked Prince Ivan. Why didn't you bring your wife? You could have brought her in a handkerchief. Where indeed did you find such a pretty? You must have searched all the meshes for her. The king and his sons and daughters in law and all the guests sat down to feast at the oaken table covered with handsome cloths. All at once there was a knocking and a badging that made the whole palace shake. The guests jumped up in fright, but Prince Ivan said, Do not be afraid. Good people, it is only my froggy riding in her box. Just then a gilded carriage drawn by six white horses dashed up to the palace door and out of it stepped Vesalisa the wise. In a dress of sky blue silk strewn with stars and shining moon upon her head, a maiden as fair as the sky at dawn, the fairest maiden ever born. She took Prince Ivan by the hand and led him to the oaken table with the handsome clothes on them. The guests began to drink, eat, and make merry. Vasilisa the wise drank from her glass and emptied the dregs into her left sleeve. 
Then she adds some swan made and put the bones in her right sleeve. The wives of the eldest princess saw her do this and they did the same. When the eating and drinking were over, the time came for dancing. Vasilisa the wise took Prince Ivan and tripped off with him. She whirled and danced and everybody watched and marveled. She waved with her left sleeve and a leg appeared. She waved her right sleeve and white swans began to swim on the lake. The king and the guests were struck with wonder. Then the other daughters-in-law went to dance. They went to one sleeve, waved one sleeve, but only a splashed one over the cast. They waved the other, but only scattered bones, and one bone hit the king right in the forehead. The king flew into a rage and drove both daughters-in-law away. Meanwhile, Prince Ivan slipped out and ran home. There he found the frog skin and threw it into the fire. When Vasilisa the wife came home, she looked for the frog skin but couldn't find it. She sat down on the bench, thoroughly grieved, and said to Prince Ivan, Oh, Prince Ivan, what have you done? Had you but waited three more days? I would have been yours forever. But now, farewell, seek me beyond the three nine lands in the three ten kingdom where Cachet the Deathless dwells. So saying, Vasilisa the wise turned himself into a grey cuckoo and flew out in the window. Prince Ivan wept long and hard, then bowed in all four directions and went forth. He knew not where to seek his wife, Vasilisa the wise. How long he walked is hard to say, but his boots were down at the hills, his tunic wore out of the elbows, and his cap began battered by the rain. By and by he met a little man, as old as he can be. Good day, my lad, said the little old man. Where are you going, and what you are around? Prince Ivan told him about the trouble. Oh, why did you burn the frog skin, Prince Ivan? said the little old man. It was not yours to keep or do away with. Vasilisa the wife was born wiser than her father, and that made him so angry that he turned her into a frog for three years. Ah, oh, well, it cannot be helped now. Take this ball of yarn and follow it without fear wherever it was. Prince Ivan sang the little old man and followed the ball of yarn. It rolled on and he came after. In an open field he met a bear. Prince Ivan took aim and was about to kill it, but the bear spoke in a human voice. Do not kill me, Prince Ivan, for you may have need of me some day. Prince Ivan spread, spared the best life and went on further. Suddenly he saw a drake flying overhead. He took him with his bow, but the drake said in a human voice, Do not kill me, Prince Ivan. For you may have need of me some day. He spared the drake and went on. A hare came running by. Again Prince Ivan snatched his bow to shoot it, but the hare said in a human voice, Do not kill me, Prince Ivan, for you may have need of me some day. So he spared the hare and went on. He came to the blue sea and saw a pike lying on the sandy beach gasping for death. Ah, Prince Ivan, said the pike, take pity of me and throw me back into the blue sea. So he threw the pike into the sea and walked on along the shore. By and by the ball of yarn rolled into the forest, and there stood a big heart of hands feet, turned around and around. Little heart, little heart, 
turn your back to the trees and face to me, please. The heart turned into face to him and it's back to the trees. Prince Ivan walked in and there sitting in the corner was Baba Yaga, the witch with a broom and a switch, a bony head with a nose like a snack. When she saw him, she said, Ooh, ooh, Russian blood, never met me before. Now I smell it at my door. Who comes here? Where from? Where to? You might give me meat and drink and a steam bath before asking questions, reported Prince Ivan. So Babaga gave him a steam bath, gave him meat and drink and put him to bed. Then Prince Ivan told her he was seeking his wife Vasilisa the wives. I know, I know, said Babaga. Your wife is now in the power of Kashe the Justice. It will be hard for you to get him back. Kashe is more than a match for you. His death is at the point of a needle. The needle is in an egg. The egg is in a dog. The dog is in a hare. The hare is in a stone cassette. And the cassette is at the top of the tall oak tree that Kashe the Deathless got at the and an apple of his eye. Prince Ivan spent the nights at Baba Yaga's and in the morning she showed him the way to the talk tall oak. How long he walked it is hard to say, but by and by he came to the tall oak tree with a stone cassette at the top of it, but it was hard to reach. Suddenly up came the bear whose life he had spared and pulled the tree out, roots and all. Down fell the cassette and broke open. Out of the cassette sprang a hare and scampered off as fast as it could. The other hare whose life Prince Ivan had spared gave chase, caught it and tore it to bites. Out of the dead hare flew a duck and shot high into the sky. But in a twinkling the dig whose life Prince Ivan had spared was a tin. The duck dropped the egg and down it fell into the blue sea. At this Prince Ivan wept bitter tears. How could he find the egg in the sea? But all at once the pike whose life Prince Ivan had spared swam up with the egg in its mouth. Prince Ivan broke the egg, took the needle out and set about breaking the point off. The more he bent it, the more Kashe the Deathless wrist and screamed, but all in vain. Prince Ivan broke off the point of the needle and Kashe fell down death. Prince Ivan went to the Kashe's white stone palace Vasilisa the wise came running out to meet him and kissed him deeply. And Prince Ivan and Vasilisa the wise went back to their own home and lived in peace and happiness to a ripe old age. This is the end. If you like my fairy tale, please thumb up. Goodbye. See you next Saturday.